today I have a freaking awesome video for you guys. We'll build a database to store our users along with their OAuth access and refresh tokens. And we will also implement Pixie to protect our users against malicious applications potentially running on their device. This is part four of our UActix template stuff. I encourage you to watch the previous videos. On this video, I showed you how to add a login service for the UI, but we could not implement Pixie or proof key for code exchange because we did not have a place to store the secrets. Pixie is a security extension for OAuth 2.0 for public clients like mobile devices or web applications. It is designed to prevent the interception of the authorization code by a malicious application that has sneaked into the same device. When you make the initial login request, you include a code challenge parameter, which is the hash of a random byte sequence that you keep secret in your database. After you get the authorization code from the OAuth provider, in this case, we work with Google, you are supposed to send back the original random byte sequence to prove that you created that original authorization code request. All right, so let's take a look at our API. This is all open source stuff. You can find it. Uh, you can find the, find the link in the description. So let me show you how we are going to authenticate our users securely. We just go to our Actix API, and there are two services: login and login callback. I explained these on in the previous video, so I make sure to check it out. So the biggest change is how we generate our OAuth request. Uh, previously, we were doing this in a stateless fashion, so we were not storing anything. But now we need to generate a, a Pixie challenge and a cross-site request forgery token, and uh, then send the challenge and the token to Google, along with like the client ID and all the other things that are required for OAuth. So let's let, take a look at how this works. We have we are using a third party to generate the Pixie a challenge and verifier and the cross-site uh, request forgery token. Uh, we just store them to, a, to our SQL database. This is just raw SQL database. You don't need to learn DCL or anything like that. Uh, and then we just send these things to Google. All right, let's do this. I need to move pretty fast because my hair gets crazier and crazier. So, all right, so let's go. Um, after the user uh, you know, the, the browser pops open and they uh, log in, this callback will be called with the auth authorization code and token that we passed on the first request. And what we'll do is use that token, the state token, to fetch the OAuth request. CSRF is cross-site uh, request forgery protection uh, token or something. So what we'll do is we'll fetch that from our database. If we cannot find that request, well, most likely someone is trying to hack us. So we'll we'll just stop at that point. If we are successful at fetching the OAuth request, then we'll craft another payload to request an access token from Google. And we'll include we will include the Pixie verifier in the second request. And if everything goes right, uh, we'll be able to get a token back from Google along with a JOT token. And we use the JOT token to get the user email and name and stuff like that. At that point, all we have to do is like upsert the user. So upsert is like insert or update the user. And that's where you will want to save the email access token, refresh token. I guess you could also save the username if you want it. Like, please, as a matter of fact, if you want to create that uh, pull request to include the username, that will be super, super useful. And I'll, I will personally appreciate if you do that. At that point, we will just return a session cookie to, to the user and we'll redirect, we'll redirect them to the, to the root uh, URL. So this is like the homepage, sort of speak. So as always, I'd like to do like a little demo of how everything works together. So yeah, let's fetch the thing. We'll log in with Dario Lencina. Then we fetch our ugly ass index page. We see that the cookie is set. Then we go to our database. I created like a handy script so that you can get to the database. So here I'm fetching my account. 
And there you go. Here's the refresh token. And if we is uh, like query the whole table, we should get also the auth token. So username, auth token, refresh token. So pretty, pretty useful stuff. Okay, so this is the tool that I like to use for managing the database. It's called DBMate, it's written in Go. Uh, this tool was created by Adrian McNeil. We used it together at Cruise Automation and GM, respectively. And let's let's go through the readme. DBMate is a database migration tool to keep your database schema in sync across multiple developers and your production servers. So we used it all the time to develop like the systems that uh, power the autonomous vehicles. Uh, I'm not sure if I can say much more than that. Uh, it, is, it is a standalone command line tool which can be used with Go, Node.js, Python, Ruby, PHP. I, sh I should add Rust to the list. Or any other language or framework you are using to write database-backed applications. This is especially helpful if you are writing many services in different languages and want to maintain some sanity with consistent development tools. So, I mean, I cannot go into the details, but what I can tell you is that at GM and Cruise Automation, we used to have backend services written in different languages, but we used Docker Compose to uh, help all these things to coexist within the same project, which I guess is similar to some degree to what we have going in our Actix template, to some degree, where we have like all the services that uh, our system our system uses here. So we have our Postgres database, our DBmate thing, and then Actix, Actix API. So if you use my setup, when you use the script and run make up, then that will run all the database migrations automatically. It's all configured to do it. If you want to add migrations, you just need to add files here. And your, your migrations need to, like you need to be able to migrate up and to roll back or to migrate down. Um, so you just prefix your migration file with the date and time using this format over here and you should be good to go. It's super handy. It's amazing. Please go give some love to Adrian. He put a lot of work to do this. 